and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below as we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. This video is going to be on strip footings, a uh, very common type of footing. Uh, typically we're going to see this footing when we have uh, lighter type of walls uh, that are extending down to our foundation and down to our soil. And uh, it's the case when, you know, the, the, we have a long footing that isn't really, really heavy. And in which case, it doesn't need to be that wide. And we can go ahead and we can just run a footing along the whole thing. It's going to act one way. This is probably the easiest type of footing to design. Let's get right into it. These kind of footings as well, they are shallow foundation. Okay, um, these shallow foundations uh, are very common. Typically, they can support, depending on your bearing capacity, um, mid-rise, even high-rise buildings. Uh, a combination of strip and spread footings or isolated footings. It typically, as a structural designer, if that's what you know, going through in school to be a structural engineer, we're going to design this footing structurally, which means the geotechnical engineer are going to give us a report. That report is going to have uh, the capacity of our soil and maybe even a suggestion of what type of footings that we should use and what we should look out for. And then we're going to design this footing structurally, which means we're going to find the thickness, we're going to find the dimensions required in order to support the load above, and we're going to make sure that it doesn't fail in shear or moment, and we're going to put the rebar in the footing accordingly. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead, let's get started. Let's start to design this footing. We'll probably break this up into a couple videos. This might be a little long. So um, what, are we, what are we given? So we're given the forces, uh, specified loads, we're given, um, and they're line loads, because if you think about this, this is a strip footing, so it could be going for, you know, 10, 15, 20 meters. Um, but because it acts one way, okay, we're going to be designing it as a one meter strip. So this B is equal to one meter. And most of the load is going to be going in this direction, the short direction. You should, we should know that by now. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with that, check my one-way slab video. Uh, we do explain that concept there. With that being said, we're going to design this one way. We're given the loads, and we're also given the, the allowable uh, soil bearing pressure. So we're calling it Q allowable here, but in a geotechnical report in real life, you would get what's called the SLS and the ULS bearing capacities. Okay. So this is the, what, what's given to us is the SLS. We almost always size our footing, um, you know, the area of the footing according to SLS. The reason why we do that, okay, is when geotechnical engineers factor their SLS loads, uh, or their SLS bearing capacity, usually they use less of a factor than we do uh, for our live and our dead load. So if we were to use our factored loads and size it according to the ULS bearing capacity, we'd usually get a smaller area, which is not conservative. So we're always, almost always going to use the SLS bearing capacity and we're going to use the unfactored loads to find the area uh, required. And that's what we're going to do right off the bat. So right away, um, we're going to find this dimension L. We already know B, so B times L. So this area of this one meter strip. So we have B times L is going to be equal to uh, our unfactored specified load. So we have our dead load plus our live load, okay, axial. And that's going to be divided by our allowable bearing capacity or SLS bearing capacity. Okay, so this is one. That's fine, that goes away. And uh, this is going to be 120 divided by 100. And that's going to give us 1.2 meters. So our required dimension is gonna be 1.2 meters. So if you get something that isn't a round number, it's important that you just round it off to something very round because when you know the when in, in real life when you're pouring this you know if you're specifying a length of you know 12 34 millimeters or something like that uh, the forming guys aren't going to listen to you so you do need to specify round numbers so let's say 1.2 meters or you know 1.3 meters or something like that um, you know concrete forming is not an exact science so make sure you keep that in mind when we're you know designing uh, our footings so um, now that we've sized our footing, okay, let's come up here. Let's use this space, so because we are going to run out of room, uh, and let's find our factored soil pressure. So our factored soil pressure, we're going to use that for our flexural design, and the factored soil pressure has nothing to do with our allowable bearing pressure. We're going to get this pressure from the load. So essentially what is the factored reaction of the soil underneath the footing due to of the load that we're applying. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to factor that, okay, 
just like we would, you know, factored in Canada anyway, usually. So 1.5 live, 1.25 dead. Uh, in your country, it might be something different. And that's over the area. So the area is going to be 1 times 1.2, okay? So the actual area of our per meter strip footing. So that is simply going to be equal to 137.5 kPa. And let's just round up and we'll say 138 kPa. Okay, so 138 kPa is the value we're going to use to size our footing. Uh, its thickness and make sure that our flexural design is good. So let's come down over here and let's number our steps. So we had step one and step two. Okay, now we have step three. So first we need to know how thick this footing is going to be. Okay, so how thick is the footing going to be? Well, what usually governs the thickness? Okay, so shear is directly related to the thickness of the footing. So we're going to use uh, our shear capacity to size our footing and we don't need to consider shear in the long direction, okay? No, no two-way shear, no punching shear and strip footings. We're really only concerned with one-way shear. First, we need to uh, determine uh, our factored shear force, okay? So we need our VF. What is our VF? Well, we need a few things before we find VF. First of all, okay, we, we're going to find it at a, at a distance D from the face of the column. That's our critical region where our shear is going to be kind of its worst. And... Now, for, as well, we need the cover. So what's the cover? And usually, I mean, in our country, uh, the cover is 75 millimeters at the base of a footing. That's just a, a code requirement. And now we need to find the uh, effective footing depth. So um, let's go ahead and let's assume a value to start, and then we're gonna kind of see if that works. So we're going to assume that H is simply 250. So this value here is 250 and let's go ahead and let's try that value out and we'll see if the shear works with that uh, as well um, it does help to use an excel spreadsheet you know you can write an excel spreadsheet put all these formulas in and just kind of do trial and error and and it actually is very very quick to do it that way um, that's how we kind of do it in the industry it might help you in school as well if you write a spreadsheet like that we're going to use 15 m bars all right, and we're going, and we know the formula for D, right? The formula for the effective depth is just simply the entire height minus the cover, minus the height of one bar. So we're going to assume that there's no stirrups. So we have 15 over two, okay? And that is just simply going to be 250 minus 75 minus 15 over two. So that gives us roughly 165 millimeters for our depth. Now let's go ahead and let's find our factored shear force at the critical section. So D from the face. And what does that look like? Well, we're going to have our footing here, okay? We have our pore break, okay? And we have our factored uh, bearing, our, our factored soil pressure, which we found to be 138 kPa, okay? And we have kind of the shear plane here, okay? And we have that shear plane kind of here, ends at a distance D from the face of the column. Okay, and this is the critical section for one-way shear, and this distance is L minus T over 2 minus D. Okay, so that's just some simple kind of arithmetic there. Now, with that all being known, okay, we can find our VF. Okay, so what is our VF? Our VF is going to be our soil, um, our factored soil pressure times B, which is uh, the depth into the page. So right now we're at kilonewton per meter. Okay, and we're going to multiply by this distance here. So L minus T over two minus D. Okay, and if we plug everything in, we plug in QF, we have everything, L, T, D, B. Okay, that's gonna give us a factored shear force of 47 kilonewton per meter, okay? So that is the factored shear force at this critical section here, all the way down the strip footing. So we have this kind of critical shear section here. And that is at a distance D from the face of the call. So um, now that we have our factored shear force VF, first we need to find DV. It's gonna give us a value of 180 millimeters for DV. And now we can go ahead and plug into our VC formula. So the shear resistance of concrete is given by this formula. I'm sure if you're in civil engineering and in Canada, uh, you know this formula. This is a very common one. Okay, so we have VWDV. And we have everything, right? So let's go ahead and just plug in. I'm not going to do it 
plug all of that in, and you're going to get the VC is 123 kilonewton per meter. We have the shear resistance of our concrete, okay, at this section here, and we have our VF. So since our VF, okay, which is 47 kilonewton per meter, is less than our VC, we are okay, okay. So this 250 millimeters is more than enough for uh, shear. Uh, 123 is much more than 47, and we don't need uh, shear reinforcement. So the idea is, is we want to provide enough thickness in our footings so that we don't add stirrups, okay? Because placing stirrups in footings is expensive and it takes a long time. It's much better to, you know, increase the concrete on 200, 100 mils, 200 mils, something like that to make it work. So in this case, we're actually quite a bit over, but you know, 250 is a good thickness for our footing. We don't really want to go anymore. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so that's good for now. Um, next video, we're going to design the flexural reinforcement using our uh, factored soil capacity. We're going to find the moment, and we're going to design for it. And we're going to show you a little bit how to detail the frame. All right. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.